and welcome to Suds and Country Video. On tonight's show, I'd like to welcome Marvin Rainwater. Welcome Hi, to Suds and Country Video. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. When, when did you start in the music business? 77 years ago. 77 years ago. Well, it seems you. like it. Uh, seems like that. They yeah. say the first hundred are the hardest. Yeah. <laughs> After that, it's downhill. Huh? I uh, got into business in uh, 1955 when I got an Arthur Godfrey show. That was Arthur Godfrey was your first break? Mm-hmm. Why country music? Well, uh, I studied classical music when I was a kid, you know, Beethoven, Rachmaninoff, Brahms, and all that stuff, and uh, I got my thumb cut off in an accident, and when I was in the Navy, why, I missed my music very much, and they started singing Roy Haycuff songs, way back in the hills, the boy I was wandered, and I loved it, so I, I turned to country music. You turned to swung over? I could play a guitar with his thumb cut off, see. Guitar is the only instrument you play? No, no, I play a lot of instruments, piano, mm -hmm. bass, and different things. Harmonicas. It's whatever you need to do. Uh, I don't try to get real good at anything. I just do it. Just like playing pool, you just shoot just good as you have to. Just, just good as you have to get by, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who, did you have any idols in the past as far as uh, before, before you got into the country music end of the business? Did you look up to any of the idols in the earlier days? Hack Williams is my idol, and now Georgia Jones is taking his place. The possum is yeah. taking your place, huh? Yeah. Taking Hank Williams' place. I was real big thrilled to be on the Ralph Emerson show with George and Charlie Pride down there last spring. And uh, George sang harmony with me on the Bluebird song. <laughs> that was a, that that, was a real honor. I bet it was. Yeah, doing Nashville now is always an honor. Who, where was your first commercial break as far as... Uh, country music is concerned going back. And my brother got me on Red Foley show down in uh, Springfield, Missouri for a guest shot and from there uh, it opened up to Arthur Godfrey's and then when I did that they took me as a regular back on Red Foley's. It all worked together. Red Foley was quite of a influence. He's a wonderful man. He's just like a daddy to all of us. He, like Ernest Tubbs, he's always out trying to help somebody else. And, uh, yeah, I asked him one time what I could do for him to repay him all the great things he'd done for me and you know I was trying to have him tell me what kind of gift he would like golf club right. or whatever sure. and he just said well you just help somebody else and then that, I tell you I never heard of an answer like that but he's truly a great guy uh, was country music uh, was music the music business always what you wanted what did you do other than music have you ever Very done little. <laughs> <laughs> I was eight years old I was writing concertos on the piano uh, out of my head. Classic and, music, huh? Yeah. Ah, uh, and my music, mother, that bless something? her heart, she took in washings for years so I could uh, have a piano and, and have lessons. We was very poor people when we were kids. And Where were you from? Kansas and Oklahoma. And uh, Dad worked hard, but we didn't have any money during the Depression. Sure. And uh, she took in these washings for a whole uh, Juilliard School of Music there so I could have my lessons and everything. And, and she wanted me to be a concert pianist, and I was running up and down playing uh, all that crazy flight of the bumblebee and all that stuff, you know. Are you happy you changed over to country music? Yes, uh, I am, because there's, uh, there's very limited uh, scope in, in classical music. You have to have sponsors and all that. And in country music, uh, I mean, you got a world out there. It's just the whole world's open to you. What song brought you to national fame? Well, you won't believe it, but this little song, I Gotta Go Get My Baby, that Teresa Brewer and Justin Tubb recorded. I don't uh, remember that one. That I re it was one of the first ones I ever recorded, and I, that's the one that won Arthur Godfrey show for me, it was that little song. What year was wrote. Arthur Godfrey again? 1955. 55. And what came followed after that song? Oh, then I had uh, several others, Gonna Find Me a Bluebird was good, real good. For that me. was probably the most, is that the most popular song out of all the songs you I recorded? I think so, and uh, uh, maybe not worldwide. Uh, uh, we had a version of Running Bear long back when Johnny Preston had it, and uh, then I had a song called Whole Lot of Woman, which they banned in this country because I said, she's a whole lot of woman, she got to have a whole lot of man. They thought that was dirty, so they banned it. How many years ago was that? And that was 1958, yeah. and it went to number one in Africa and all over the continent, no and kidding. in England for six weeks as number one, so they didn't take this, uh, take offense to this. Where did you travel in the, over the last 30 years? Oh. Since 55 to 1988 being today, where did you... Uh all over Switzerland and Austria and Germany and Sweden. We just got back from Sweden and Germany and England and and uh, I took my little wife over there. This time we had a wonderful time. Where is country music most received? Has it has the Europeans and the Africans and everywhere you've been have they received country music as well as the folks in the U.S.? Even more. So, uh, uh, but actually, 
rockabilly was is what's really hot over there. It's like the Bill Haley stuff and the Carl Perkins. Today? Show. Yeah, today. I got a record that was number four two weeks ago in Yugoslavia, Poland, and Austria. <laughs> and that's a rockabilly it. type it's, of a... Well, this is a up-tempo song about the Oklahoma where they wouldn't let you dance down in Henrietta, Oklahoma. They'd lock you up. You got, they caught you dancing. How, it's the truth. When you go to the European countries, they don't speak English. How do they... They do, though. They, okay. How did... Back 30 years ago, English wasn't exactly spoken. How did the people that didn't understand what you were saying receive the music? Do they just go for the song? The same way the, the Japanese music. do now. The Japanese mm -hmm. phonetically okay. sing Hank Williams' song and it sounds exactly like it and they okay. can't speak a word okay. of English. I mean, they don't know what he's saying. No, they just read, the, they speak the words and, and go for the music. But uh, in, in Sweden and all the uh, continent, uh, Germany and everything, they speak English very well over there. All right. Today is a, to. Today's a different world than it was 30 yeah. years ago. So country music over the years is being received just as popularly as it was years ago? It's, it's really getting strong everywhere. They love American music and uh, uh, the American artists, and uh, they're touring all the time. I, I expect somebody over in Rotterdam to have one of the world's largest festivals one of these days. And, uh, country music festival? Mm -hmm. but the way in England, they have uh, the Wembley Festival. They've had that a 10 or 12 times. I was on that once, and uh, when Lefty Frizzell died, that I took his place. And this holds about 15,000 people in the Wembley uh, uh, arena there mm -hmm. where they do the, the tennis right. matches and everything. And this is a big thing every year in England. It's just huge. They bring artists over from the States and it's really a smashing no, success. Pretty. That's every England, year. huh? Mm -hmm. Consider that. Do you write songs? No, oh, most all of them. Yeah. Most of the songs. Did you write Bluebird? Mm -hmm. I only got eight lines in it. I couldn't think of another verse. <laughs> any, songs, <laughs> any songs that you wrote reflect any personal experiences? All of them do. Uh, How do you come up with ideas? You live them. Oh, you live them, okay. Yeah, and you, you take an idea out of life and just and work a circle around it, so to speak. And I'm always uh, uh, open, I've got my ears open all the time for, uh, for uh, an expression that will be a song. A song, now you, is that a hook to get the song going? I would think so. Uh, the, if you can get in a good expression that will be the title and the basic theme of a song, you've got yourself a good hook. Okay, that's that's what I was told. You need a, Sometimes you need a hook to get the, the motion moving. And if it's bad enough, they got a hook to pull you off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> you've been in business for uh, 30 some years already. Do uh, you think today's music, we're talking today now, do you think we're being flooded with uh, more of a, let's see, quantity of singers than we are quality of singers? I think the quality's coming back. Yeah, I think the quantity was, all, for the last 10 years, I think it was quantity. Quantity? Yes. And I think it was uh, it was just throwing records out there and, and uh, well, see the record, big record companies had rather uh, control of the business where they had all the airplay up until recently. They passed new regulations that uh, that uh, you could have a number one airplay with no sales, which really it really helped the business. Congress did this. And that was back how many years well, ago? Well, two, three years two, ago. Three years and, ago. And now that's that's why the independent labels have a chance now to to be in the business. Before they didn't, there were the radio stations couldn't play them so, oh, unless you had good sales. Well, that was a rather uh, monopoly, so they turned it around, and now you can have a number one play with no sales, and that will create sales, see, and that's fair. That's today. That's today. That's, today. that's, right. what, that's helped music an awful lot since they've done that, see. Uh, in other words, you can play without a number, without record sales. That's right. With no sales at all, you I, can have airplay. I didn't hear this. And the stations don't have to say, well, we can't play it anymore because it's not selling, see. They can keep playing as long as the public wants to hear it, they can keep playing it. And that's great. See, I, I really like it. You that. think that's a better deal now? Absolutely, because unknown people can get played uh, and if it's a bad quality pitch it throw it away and if right. it's good you have a chance to play it and people have a chance to hear it who do you think today is helped who do you think that philosophy helped out today of all the singers that are around today well, I think Ricky Skaggs uh, proved that that real traditional good old country music can can be a hit with that uh, uh, crying the heart out over you no oh, yes uh, up till then they, they were always trying to uh, be, go into the pop field. And, uh, uh, my yeah. next question was, what do you think of crossovers? <laughs> well, it's great to have the crossover because there's not, there wasn't that much sales in country music. And in order to get the, the sales, you had to go crossover. Well, he proved that you can sell a country record and make money with it, and everybody else said, that's great. But then came the George Straits, the Randy Travis's, and the, 
and the Dwight Yoakams and all this, and they're selling records. But now. a lot of those records that they're selling are re-hits from the past. What's wrong with that? No, I'm nothing. I'm just they're, saying. They're, but they're pulling on yeah, strong material. They're, they're, strong, they're pulling on good material. Now, no. do you now do you think any songs today are being written that are uh, that are being written today will equal the songs from the yesteryear? I think it, I think they will because uh, I think this is going to give people incentive. Uh, to write. You know, when there's no market for your material, you, you dry up, you, you, you lose your enthusiasm for it. See? What, what, the, what theme sells records today? What theme? What, yeah, do you think there's a theme behind it? Or what, or what do you put in a record today or in a song that's going to promote it more than... You know, years ago, country was known for different, you know... For well, cheating was cheating the old... Cheating was, right, exactly. And, and there's not so much of that anymore. There's always a, that influence. And drinking but, was yeah. another one, you know. But now it's... truck it's, driving it's, was a... It's categories you know, of the head, but yeah. now it seems like it's just the categories of life itself. I mean, it's getting more real all the time, I think, you know, the songs. And they got humor involved in it, and, uh, and I don't know, they're coming up with some strong, strong songs, like that one about Daddy, you know, those, the Daddy songs that the girls have been recording. Daddy's Hands. So that great. was a Holly Dunn Holly song. Dunn. She wrote that years ago and, to, and didn't go anywhere, and then all of a sudden she just, you know, got around to it. But now that kind of song yeah. really, to me, is really country. Now, the other girl that had this... Uh, uh, Judy Rodman had this song about the farm. All right, I think I want to thank you for being on my show. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure to talk to somebody that goes back into the early days of country music. Not early days, but, you know, back 30 years. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. That about wraps it up for this edition of Suds and Country Video. I want to thank Marvin Rainwater, and uh, thank you.